Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So, in the previous lecture we have started with the, uh, the one of the definition that is isomorphism and the inverse of a given linear transformation. So, we will continue with that one. Now, we are going to define a very important theorem regarding the isomorphism. So, it says that every real or may be complex vector space of dimension n is isomorphic. So, it is isomorphic to V n or V n c if it is a complex number, what we are talking about the real. So, that is there and this V n we know that is the nth dimensional vector space and so from here I can say that if I choose any vector space having the dimension n then it is isomorphic to V n. So, this one uh, we want to prove. Now, for this one, so I let I choose that let u be a vector space of dimension n. Now, Suppose this is the dimension n, then let we also take the set B u1, u2, un and ordered set ordered basis for u. So, we are taking the ordered basis of u and this is of dimension n. Then for any u belongs to u that I take the vector space u, I just take any element u, we can write u as alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 alpha n u n, this one I can write because uh, this is the basis ordered basis. So, I can define my element u as this linear combination and now from here we also know that. So, this one I may be I can write equation on 1. So, I can write that alpha i's are unique because this is the basis. So, it is uniquely determined. Now, from here we also know the set the vector alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n. So, this is the vector is a is the coordinate vector is the coordinate vector of u related to basis b and we know that this we can represent as alpha 1, alpha 2. So, this is a vector and I can write this as u with the base b. Now, from here you, you know that this vector that belongs to v n because it is just the elements coming from the field. So, it is a, a real numbers. So, it belongs to v n. So, based on this one we define a linear transformation T from u to v n where dimension of u is n as. So, let us uh, define this one T of u is equal to 
alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha r. So, I define like this one, where u I know that I can write the u like this one and these are the coordinate vectors. So, these are the coordinates alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n are the coordinates of the vector u with respect to the basis b. So, that uh, we already know. So, this is my 2. So, this is a map that I am defined. Now, we want to show that it is a linear transformation. Now, T is a linear transformation. So, we know that for u belongs to u, I have a u is equal to alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 alpha n u n. This one I already know. And now for a element v belongs to u, I can write v as alpha 1 u 1. Sorry, I can should take this as uh, maybe beta 1 u 1 plus beta 2 u 2 and beta n u n. So, I can write like this one. Now, from here I know that the u plus v is alpha 1 plus beta 1 u 1 alpha 2 plus beta 2 u 2 alpha n plus beta n u n. So, this linear combination I can write no problem. Now, from here I want to find what will happen T u plus v. Now, T u plus v I know that from here these are the coordinates of u plus v related to the basis u 1, u 2 up to u n. So, from here I can write that the T of u plus v will be equal to alpha 1 plus beta 1, alpha 2 plus beta 2, alpha n plus beta n. So, this is there. So, now we are finding from here. Now, from here I can write that this uh, vector summation I can write as alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n plus beta 1, beta 2, beta n and that gives me. Now, this is I know that this is equal to T of u plus this is I know from here that the T is v because if I define the T v this is equal to beta 1. So, from here I know I got this. So, addition is ok that this then also we can define for any alpha belongs to field f thus it is a scalar I can show very easily that T of alpha u. So, T of alpha u will be what? So, I am taking the alpha u, u is this one uh, my u is this one. So, alpha u will be alpha alpha 1 u 1 alpha alpha 2 u 2 alpha alpha n u n. So, from here I can write that this will be equal to alpha alpha 1 alpha alpha 2 alpha alpha n and this I can take alpha common. So, alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n and from here I can say that this is equal to T of u. So, from these two properties we can say that which implies that my T is a uh, linear transformation. Now, we need to show that T is 1 1. Now, we need to show that that 
T is non singular that is 1 1 and on 2. Now from here <coughs> I want to check. So, let us do this one T is 1 1. So, this one we need to show. So, for this one what I am going to do is so I am going to show here for this one that the null space of T will contain only the 0 element. So, that is what I am going to show you from this one. <coughs> now, from here the T is 1 1. because I will take the element T u is equal to 0. So, let us take this element which implies that I am taking the element alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n is equal to 0. 0 means it is belonging to the V n. And from here I can get alpha is equal to alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n all are 0. So, this is what I have done. Now, from here my u is alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 alpha n u n and now I can add this as 0 into u 1 plus 0 into u 2 plus 0 into u n which shows that my u will be 0 and from here I can say that my t of 0 will be 0 and that shows that this is true. So, from here I can say that the null space will contain only the 0 element and which implies that t is 1 1. This is what we can show uh, we earlier also done these things. So, if we are able to show that the null space containing the only the 0 element then this is 1 1. Also using a rank nullity theorem. So, rank nullity theorem says that rank of t plus null t t. So, that will be in this case it is of dimension n. So, this is equal to n, but this is 0 and from here I can say that the rank of t is n and also dimension of I am taking the space v n. So, the dimension of V n is n and the rank of this is. So, I can say that if the rank is n it means the range space T is equal to V n and from here I can say that the range space of T will be complete V n. So, it means the dimension. So, from here I can say that my T is on to. So, T is onto means the, the whole range space is equal to the complete uh, vector space V n by the rank nullity theorem we can show this one because both have the same or dimension n n. So, if it is 1 1 onto then from here we can say that which implies that the T is isomorphic and from here I can say that u is isomorphic to v n. If so that is the, the, the dimension of u is n. So, this is a very powerful theorem because it shows that any if I choose any vector space of dimension n then I always I can define a map which is isomorphic to v n. So, this is the way we can uh, use this theorem. Now, so, after doing this uh, theorem, now we want to discuss a very important topic. 
So, this is what we want to discuss is matrix associated with a linear transformation. So, earlier case also we have discussed the matrices A and we are sure that that works same as a linear transformation. Now, here we want to give some rigorous idea that how a linear transformation is associated with a matrix. So, this is what we want to show. Now, let so how we can uh, check this one. So, let I have a basis B 1 suppose I have a basis u 1, u 2, u 3 and I have the another basis v 2 that is v 1, v 2, v 3, v 4 and these are the b ordered basis of v 3 and v 4 respectively. Then let there is a linear transformation T from V3 to V4 defined as. So, let us uh, we define. So, we are defining the linear transformation and let, let the linear transformation is given as T of U1 because I know that the transformation is well defined if it is given on the basis and that is uniquely determined. So, T of u 1 is basically v 1 minus 2 v 2 plus v 3 minus v 4. T of u 2 that is given to me v 1 mi minus v 2 plus 2 v 4 and T of u 3 is equal to 2 of v 1 plus 3 of v 2 minus v 4. So, this is the transformation given to me. Now, we want to find matrix related to linear transformation T. So, that we want to find out. Now, from here I can define from here that. So, this one we can write as. So, it is if you see it is a linear combination of the of the basis v 1, v 2, v 3, v 4. Now, from here I can write my T of u 1 as because these are the basis. So, I can define this as a v 1. So, this is my basis because basis is from v 4. So, it is a vector column vector. So, I just write here v 1. So, this is my column vector minus 2 times the column vector v 2 plus column vector v 3 minus column vector v 4 and this is a linear combination we are taking. Now, from here we can write, I can write the coordinates of T u 1 with respect to the basis b 2 and this is what this is equal to 1 minus 2, 1 minus 1. So, this is the basis we can define uh, the coordinates of the given uh, element T u T u 1 with respect to the relative basis B 2. Similarly, I can define T u 2 with respect to the basis B 2. So, that will be a 1 minus 1 0 2 and T of u 3 basis B 2. So, this will be 2 3 
0 minus 1. Now, these are all are the coordinates we have defined corresponding to the different different vectors. Now, what I do I write a matrix with these coordinates. So, I am writing the first coordinate as a first column. So, if you write this one I can write the first coordinate as 1 minus 2 1 minus 1. So, this is the first coordinate I am writing. The second coordinate 1 minus 1 0 2 1 minus 1 0 2 and 2 3 0 2 3 0 minus 1. So, this is a matrix I am we are getting this is 4 cross 3 matrix and I call it this matrix A. So, this is the matrix is called the matrix of linear transformation T relative to the basis B 1 B 2. Because here we are taking the basis B 1 and B 2 and this is we are taking ordered basis. Why we are taking ordered basis? Because we are using the corresponding coordinate vector. So, that is why the if we change the order the coordinate will change. So, it that will be a different vector in that case. So, this is the corresponding matrix we are able to define. So, now from here we can write that. So, I can define the definition now. So, what do we say in this definition? Let u and v be vector spaces of dimension n and m respectively. So, this is the vector spaces of dimension n and m that is respectively let. So, I take B 1 in the, the basis that represent u 1, u 2, u n let B 1 and B 2 that is V 1, V 2, V m because it is a dimension m be ordered basis for u and v respectively. Then let there is a linear transformation T from u to v, it is given to me. So, let T is equal to u to a b a linear transformation. So, it is given to us this is a linear transformation defined as. So, it is defined like this one T of u 1 because it is going from u to v that is equal to maybe I can call it alpha 1 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 1 v 2 plus alpha 3 1 v 3 plus alpha. So, because we have a n m number of vectors here, so it will be m 1 v m. Similarly, I can define my T of any u j. So, it will be alpha j 1 v 1 alpha. So, it is it will be 1 j alpha 2 j v 2 alpha m j v m and in the end it will get T of u n this will be alpha 1 n v 1 plus alpha 2 n v 2 
alpha m n v m. So, this is the linear transformation is defined to me. So, it is defined by Lix 1. Then then the matrix associated with the linear transformation L t is given as. So, if you see from here then this linear transformation we can define uniquely because these are the bases and if it is a basis then we know that the, the corresponding system of equation will be the system will be non-singular and then we can define the unique solution for that system. So, in this case all this alpha 1, alpha 2 all these elements will be unique and it will be uniquely determined and so this linear transformation will be unique. So, then the corresponding matrix A, so I give the name A, so this can be given as, now what we are going to do? I, I am taking the first element and putting its coordinate as the first column. So, it will be alpha 1 1, alpha 2 1 up to alpha m 1 because m is number. Then I can define alpha 1 2, alpha 2 2, alpha m 2. So, it is alpha I can define from 1 1. So, 1 n alpha 2 n and alpha m n. So, we are defining the matrix of order m cross n. So, this is the matrix that will be, so this is the matrix A. So, the matrix associated with the linear transformation is given by this one and is called matrix associated with linear transformation L t related to basis B 1 and B 2. And we also sometimes represent by T transformation corresponding to B 1 B 2 that is equal to my matrix A. So, this basically matrix is made up of the coordinates of this one, coordinate of the vectors. So, this way we can define the uh, matrix associated with the linear transformation. So, let us uh, take one example. Let a linear transformation T from V from V 2 to V 3 is defined as T of x 1, x 2 is equal to x 1 plus x 2, 2 x 1 minus x 2, 7 x 2. So, this is a transformation given to me. It is from V 2 to V 3. Then find the associated matrix A. So, we need to find the matrix A, but we need to find the basis. So, find the associated matrix A related to standard basis. So, related to standard basis means I know that the standard basis B 1 is E 1 and E 2 and B 2 is I can just call it maybe F 1, F 2, F 3. 
you know that this E1 is basically 1 0, E2 is 0 1, F1 is 1 0 0, F2 is 0 1 0 and F3 is 0 0. So, this, these are the standard basis. Now, from here, so how we can find this solution? So, in this case, I just define now because we deal with the standard basis. So, if you see from here, I can write here as x1, x2, and this one I, I can write x1 common. So, it will be 1, 2, 0 plus x2 it is 1 minus 1 7. So, now from here we can define this uh, transformation we can write like this one. Now, from here if you see from here then I can write this as 1 2 0 1 minus 1 7 this is the matrix and here it is x 1 x 2. Now, this is equal to T of x 1 x 2 x 1 x 2 is the vector here I am writing in the terms of a column vector because here it is a matrix 3 cross 2. So, it is 2 cross 1. Now, based on this one if you can see from here then this matrix A will correspond to linear transmission T because in this case I am talking about the standard basis. So, standard basis means no change will be there in the terms of coordinates because we know that because I can write my element 1 2 0 can be written as 1 f 1 plus 2 f 2 plus 0 f 3. So, there is no change in the coordinates. So, that is why I am able to write the matrix directly from here. It is 1 2 0 similar to the second one. So, the second element is 1 minus 1 7 I can write in this form. So, from here you can see that this is a linear uh, corresponding matrix to the linear transformation T. So, my matrix will be in this case. So, my A will be 1 2 0 and 1 minus 1 and 7 and this will be always 3 cross 2 because our transformation is from V 2 to V 3. So, this is my corresponding matrix. So, related to the standard basis. So, this is the matrix related to standard basis. So, that is uh, we can define with the corresponding to standard basis. Now, if you, somebody says me that define the linear transformation, we have a transformation the same transformation, but I change my basis then what will happen to the matrix. So, that matrix we can define. So, this type of things we will do in the next lecture. So, we will stop here. So, in the today's lecture we have defined that how for a given linear transformation how we can show a matrix corresponding to the linear transformation related to the given basis and uh, in the coming lecture we will continue with this one. So, thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much.